Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating a Vigintic polynomial. Don't worry about the word Vigintic because it just means the degree is 20 as you can see. So we have z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0 and we're going to evaluate z to the power 20 plus z to the 10 plus 1. Okay, so something very similar just multiply the powers by 10. So how do we do that? We're going to be using a couple different methods and let's start with the first one. First of all, I, I noticed that z squared plus z plus 1 is a special product. If you use the formula for geometric series, the finite one, this should give you z cubed minus 1 divided by z minus 1. Think about it, you could also get this by multiplying this expression or both sides by z minus 1, which would give you z cubed minus 1, right? So it's kind of like part of the formula for difference of two cubes. Nice. Now, of course, we're going to set this equal to 0, and that implies the following. The numerator is supposed to be 0, so z cubed minus 1 equals 0, but at the same time, z minus 1 does not equal 0. What does that imply? It means that z cannot equal 1. And I think we know that, don't we? Because if z is equal to 1, this equation is not going to be satisfied, right? 1 plus 1 plus 1 does not equal 0, as far as I know. So, what do we get? We get z cubed equals 1, but z does not equal 1. So that's kind of weird if you think about it in real terms or real number terms. Of course, we're going to think complex, right? So we're talking about the cube roots of 1. So one way to approach this is make sure z does not equal 1, but always use the fact that z cubed equals 1. That's what we're going to use. So we have z to the power 20 plus z to the power 10 plus 1. Now we're supposed to evaluate this, and I know that z cubed is equal to 1 and z does not equal 1, right? So this means that z can be written as a cube root of 1. And as you know, if z cubed is e to the power 2 pi and i, then one of the cube roots can be written as e to the power 2 pi i over 3 for n equals 1, right? And then the other one can be written as e to the power 4 pi i over 3. And the third one is going to be e to the power 6 pi i over 3 or just e to the power 2 pi i, which is actually the same thing as 1. But remember, z can't be 1, so we're going to discard it and use one of these. Which one? It doesn't matter. I can go ahead and use this. But what is this angle here? 2 pi over 3, the argument, right? Euler's formula gives us e to the i theta in the most compact form. So, 2 pi over 3 is basically 120 degrees, if you want to look at it that way. So, z sub 1 can be written as cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. And then if you go ahead and replace these with the numerical values, cosine of 120 is going to be the opposite of cosine of 60, which is 1 half, so that's going to be negative 1 half. But sine 2 pi over 3 is positive, and that's going to be positive root 3 over 2. And of course, it's going to be multiplied by i. So this is one of the cube roots of unity, right? Because 1 is called unity in this sense. And if you plug it in, good luck with that, right? If you plug it in here, then you'll get the answer. But as you can see, this is very painful. Um, who would want to raise this to the 20th power? But here's the thing. If you just take that, e to the power 2 pi i over 3, and then raise it to the power 20, things are going to be a lot easier because you're just going to get e to the power 40 pi i over 3. And 40 pi over 3, if you think about it, contains several multiples of 2 pi. If you think about it, if you divide uh, 3 into 40 and look at the remainders, I'm kind of thinking about it, and I think 39 pi over 3, uh, 39 would be divisible by 3, so I can kind of write it as 39 pi plus pi, and then if I divide both sides by 3, I'm going to be getting 13 pi plus pi over 3. But 13 pi is not a multiple of 2 pi, no worries. Take one of the pi's, give it to pi, uh, pi over 3, that's going to give you 4 pi over 3, so this is going to be the angle, the principal value we're looking for. Make sense? So, 
and then it's just going to give you the 20th power and of course you do something the same thing with the 10th power and add them up again it's still painful so let's just go ahead and look for an alternative method yay second method so the second method is going to be hopefully nicer you're going to get to decide but we have z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0 and we're supposed to evaluate this so here's what i'm going to do I'm going to use the fact that z cubed equals 1 because that was so valuable and I obviously skipped it on purpose because I saved it for the second method and I have something else for the third method for you guys, okay? So, z cubed equals 1, right? We got that from the first method, but if you are not convinced, go back and check it out or I can just tell you, multiply both sides by z minus 1 and you'll get it. So, since z cubed is 1, I can go ahead and raise both sides to the power 3 to get z to the ninth, which is also 1. Awesome. And I can also get raise uh, both sides to the 6th power to get z to the power 18, which is 1. I'm not there yet, but I'm close. z to the power 20 is z to the power 18 times z squared. And I know that z to the 18 is equal to 1. Therefore, this is gonna just going to be 1 times z squared and that is going to be z squared. So z to the power 20 is the same as z squared, and you can definitely check this with the cube roots of 1, or cube roots of unity. The same by the same token, z to the 10th is z to the 9th times z, and we know that z to the 9th is 1, so this is 1 times z, which is z. So, and then I have 1, which is 1, but if you just add these, z to the 20 plus z to the 10, is going to equal z squared plus z. And if you just add 1 to both sides, which is what we're looking for, right? Isn't this what we're looking for? We're going to get this, which is equal to 0. So basically, those expressions are equivalent, but of course, it's kind of hidden from view a little bit. But if you are really good with uh, and strong with complex numbers, you probably saw that. So let's go ahead and talk about the third method real quick, and then we'll finish up. Okay, and if you know of any other method, I'm pretty sure there are, like a fourth method, please let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, keep up the good work. Okay, so we have z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0, and then we're supposed to evaluate this, z to the 20 plus z to the 10 plus 1. Okay, so here's the thing. This is going to be very painful, so it's probably going to be incomplete, but here's what I'd like to do. Since this was set equal to, it's kind of like the, the following. I have a polynomial. If I divide this polynomial, divide by this, right? What's the remainder? That sort of question that uh, I'm, th I'm thinking about. So, and how can you find that? You can find it by division, right? And I did the work for you. Don't worry about it. So if you divide this polynomial, the the bigger one, the Vigintic one, by the quadratic, guess what? There's no remainder. The remainder is zero, which means it's perfectly divisible. And this is the quotient. Do you like that? It's z to the power 18. I forgot what it's called. But the main idea is, if this is zero, this is also zero, because this guy here contains this one, which is zero. Therefore, the answer is zero. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.